I just got asked a really good question on YouTube by a guy, a guy called Johnny, and it was about validation and how I handle validation when I'm using Quasar. And this is such a loaded question. This is something I've been dealing with for years and years. And basically, I've come up with like three or four different solutions for um, handling validation. And just like a too long don't read version, the thing that I landed on was simply relying on the server for validation. And the reason I did that is I basically realized I'm not Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or one of these big companies. It doesn't matter if I have to send a request to the back end and then get some errors from that back end and display them on the front end. It really isn't that important for me to catch those validation errors before that request is sent. I mean, the internet's pretty fast these days. Like, I understand that some people might want to do those optimizations, but I would highly, highly recommend you just don't worry about it for now and you move on with your life and do, just do server-side validation. It's going to make your life easier and you're going to be able to just get on with your code a lot faster. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out. That is what I do, but here's some other thoughts. So there's internal validation and there's external validation. With internal validation, and by the way, this isn't a high how-to video. I'm not going to actually write any code here. I'm just going to go through some, um, some of these concepts. This is the most basic way you can do validation with Quasar. And it's actually quite fantastic, fantastic and it's going to handle most of your use cases. And basically, uh, you've got this rules prop here and you pass it through a function that's got the value. So that's going to be the value of the field. A condition, so you can say, for example, if value is equal to null, um, or if um, value is greater than four, for example, if you want to check the length of that value. And if that condition is true, nothing's going to happen. Basically, the field is going to say that's totally fine. Otherwise, the other side of this OR operator is going to be a string, which is the error message itself. I personally think that this is really cool. In fact, here's a full example. If the value includes hello, um, it's going to pass. And so since that is true, this will be returned. And so that um, the, the field is going to be considered uh, valid. And if it's false, you get that string back and the string is displayed. It's a really nice, concise way of writing out validation. And there's even a nice, sim you know, the, the docs are just fantastic, I think, for Quasar. It uh, gives you a really good example here of a rule. Notice that it's sitting in an array. And the cool thing about that is since it's in an array, you can simply add a comma there and then add another function for your other rules. So this is a really nice way to do basic validation like required and... Um, and stuff like that. Actually, even more complex validation, you can actually have your own validator functions and pass it through here instead. So instead of doing that function directly, you could have a function from a library like Vulidate that you pass through there. I've never actually, I haven't experimented much with that in the past, but I'm pretty sure that's the method that most people de go down. They use a validation library that accepts the value um, and you simply put the validator directly in there. All right, so that's one way you can do it. The other thing is you can actually use, basically ignore a lot of the Quasar way of doing validation and use something like Vulidate. So Vulidate is what Quasar recommends if you want external validation. And by external validation, I don't mean external as in a server. I think I might've actually said that before, but I was wrong. By external validation, they mean like using an external library, all right? So if you wanna use Vulidate and let it completely take care of your validation, you can go ahead and do that. So you can check out that library um, and look at how it does it. That's all going to work with Quasar. It's really, um, it's, it's really quite wonderful using Vulidate. I don't like using it personally because it feels like too much markup, but it can be a fantastic idea if you need, if you simply need that extra validation on the front end. Now, another thought I wanna add in here is that you might wanna create your own components. In fact, this is what I do. I have a schema component. Let's see if I have a proper test for this. I'm not sure if I actually do. Um, yeah, so this schema component, I, I don't, yeah, here we go. It actually has got validation. This actually has validation built in for me. So basically I've got a, a set of validation rules and within a schema, I can say whether or not, um, wh whether or not that field is required, for example. This is a bit more advanced, but basically since I have a lot of knowledge about my application, I can start using that knowledge to create forms dynamically and even inject the validation dynamically as well. So when I really want front-end validation, I can automatically generate these forms and then say, for example, user ID is required in a, in a JSON schema. So if that didn't make sense to you, don't worry, that's totally fine. Um, 
I just wanted to sort of point that out for the more advanced users. So, but for the most part, I use the concept of external validation, but what I basically do is I'll, um, I won't validate the form at all, or I might just do something like check that it's um, actually got something in there. So like really basic validation, like um, saying that the field is required. And if that field, um, if the form comes up back in valid, so if I get a 422 response and I get an error back, um, and if you don't know what that means, this is more kind of backend talk now. So if I get a response with errors, I then basically use this external validation um, in order to do, in order to slot that in. So I'll slot in the error message and I'll slot in whether or not there are any error messages. And so for that, I can say like errors um, dot, and then the name of the field is what it would look like. I'm using Laravel in the back end. And so for me, it would be like errors dots. And if the field name was um, name, it would be errors dot name. Um, and then it might say like the name field is required. And so I'd say errors dot name. And then I that's actually going to be an array. So I get the first thing off that array. If that didn't make sense, that's totally fine. This is one of these things you just got to kind of look into and experiment with until you can get it working with your back end of choice. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Internal val validation, external validation. One more thing I want to bring in to um, wrap up this video is um, I also do validation sometimes on individual fields. So these are some of my base components I use. Um, this is like a whole, I could do a whole video on all of these <laughs> base components or like a whole series on it and I probably will. But just as another example, something like dates, it's, it actually takes, not date time, let's just go to a normal date input. Let's say B date, my base date input. Something like dates, um, the validation is a little bit more complicated and I like to kind of handle that myself. So if I do a backspace there, or maybe this one doesn't do it. Oh, there we go. So it tells me that it's invalid. And so if you want, you can actually dig a little bit deeper into the component and give some more live feedback on whether or not uh, the input field is valid. And so the way I did that was I basically have a computed property. I'm using DayJS behind the scenes because we do a lot of um, date related stuff uh, in the company I work for. Um, and so I use DayJS. I just do a quick validation on that date. And if it is valid, um, then it'll show up here. So let's just say 02. 2021 and then I get this nice green valid symbol or I can select it using the picker like this which is kind of nice so that's another thing you can do if you're creating a custom component you can kind of go all out and do a little bit of extra validation within the uh, within the scope of that component itself that can be really helpful um, if you want to go the extra mile with giving users a little bit of extra feedback there so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did check out quasarcast.com this is actually where I do all of these videos um, and later on down the line, some of my YouTube videos, um, some videos that aren't on YouTube might actually show up here. Uh, so it's definitely worth creating an account at quasarcast.com. And I'm going to start um, getting more diligent about emailing and letting basically people know uh, the latest series that have been released. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, most of my stuff, I'm not just talking about concepts like this. We're actually building things. We're actually doing stuff with components. But yeah, go to quasarcast.com slash register. Um, or even quasarcast.com if you just want to check out some of the course content there. And this is synced with my YouTube account. So you can see a lot of the stuff that I've been up to there. Podcasts, a bit of my story about uh, my story being a developer. And we've got three episodes of the Quasar show as well here, which is kind of cool. So check that out. Hope you enjoyed this one. And yeah, I'll see you in a future video.